you mentioned societies building around the biggest technology of the era mm. and the and the cars were were you know really this this technological piece that we've been building around i feel like nothing says that more than like sports stadiums you mm. see sports stadiums nowadays those could be like w the 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 structure around a sports stadium or like the environment should be really awesome but what you see is just miles of cars parking lots, yeah. you see just parking lots and that you know from an archaeological perspective uh or an architecture perspective perspective there do you, do you feel like we'll get to the point one day where we'll go back to actually building awesome cities or are we yeah. just gonna have parking lots for 10 years for like hundreds of years here no we're gonna get rid of the parking lots you're, you're exactly right that's a perfect example you walk through um a city right so even in austin um i i went you know back to my parents house recently and was driving down their street and realized after living out here where everything is very human scaled, where we have three foot wide trails, you know, connecting houses together and all the space is usable by humans and surrounded by nature. Um, and then you go back to a city and you drive down a street and you're just like, oh my God, there's all the, the houses are like really far away from each other actually there's all this space in between for cars to drive and cars to park and cars to park in in parking you know driveways and parking lots it's yeah. just like it's insane if you um that there's a, a member of our core team uh named phil levin who started a bunch of incredible co-living communities in the bay area um and and you know was on the, the founding team at cul-de-sac which is trying to build this car free city in arizona and um, you know, what Phil really realized is that um, if we want to build high density housing, you know, all you have to do is get rid of cars. You don't have to build crazy skyscrapers to, to get high density housing because cars and the space that cars operate in and take up and park in is like two thirds of cities. And so if you just get mm. rid of that um, and replace that with, with stuff that is at, at a human scale um, and you know uh, um, additional housing and, and additional amenities for people and parks and these sorts of things, there's just a tremendous amount of wasted space. Um, so, so yeah, I think that, that uh, in the next century, we're gonna see a very different relationship between our built environment and cars. That that was a great breakdown. I appreciate your you indulging me on on that topic. There, it, it's cool to see the Twitter profiles, like the architecture Twitter profiles that have like top down shots of like old and old yes. cities that still exist in Europe, where they're like, oh my god, that's like super intricate and awesome. And then you see like grids for the U.S. Yep, yep. <laughs> or there's even some similar pictures I've seen where people will overlay a single highway interchange. You know, like the big roundabouts that you have to get on to go on highways. They'll take like one of those, and then they'll take like venice you know and they'll overlay like a chunk of venice on a single highway overpass it's like you can fit the the kind of main um walkable area of a lot of these old european cities in the space that it takes just to have a freaking highway interchange